Hello, and welcome to Amateur Philosophers Play Games. I'm Noah, your host. And I'm Justin, the player. And today, uh, and this is the show where we play video games on the internet, talk about philosophy, philosophical ideas, and philosophize about whatever we feel like. As a disclaimer, of course, neither of us are professionals. As per the name, we are amateurs. We're just two dudes on the internet who like talking about this stuff, so take everything we say with a grain of salt. Yes. But with that out of the way... We will be continuing today Justin's playthrough of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and uh, turn around. I remember last time you we were playing this, you asked me to remind you you want to cross the river. Right, that's right. Yes, okay, okay, good. I'm yes. glad you remembered that because that's the opposite yeah, you, way I was going. are going the other way. Yes. Okay. So Justin right. will be crossing the there. river, uh, yeah. and we will be crossing the river into philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. A bit, a bit of a stretch there with a the metaphor, but okay. <laughs> All metaphors are a stretch, but uh, yeah. Okay. So the, what we wanted to talk about today was, uh, I actually wanted to talk about one of the fields of philosophy we haven't talked about yet, that would be logic, and specifically logical paradoxes, because that's, in my opinion, that's the fun part of logic. Yeah. It's no fun without it. Uh, right, well, you, you, to, you wanted to go cook. Yeah, like I'm going to make sure I have stuff. Like some, anyway. yeah. So yeah, logical paradoxes. Uh, they, these come in all forms. Maybe, dear viewers, maybe you've seen them, maybe you haven't. I'm going to start out, start us out with probably one of the easiest ones, or not easiest, but most straightforward ones that to get us started. Uh, the statement, this statement is false. Okay. Right. This statement is false. Now give a little background. I don't have a ton of formal training on this, but I have uh, read some stuff and I, I, this interests me. So best I understand, uh, yeah, cook it. So hold it and then like grab a monster part. And I think you can, yeah. Yeah. So in my understanding of logic, Oh, wait, I, I don't have a fire going. You don't, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, my understanding of logic, we typically say statements are either true or false, right? So, for yes. example, the statement, uh, this I'm is playing a, a game. I, I'm, Justin is playing a game. That's a, that is a true statement because it matches with the real world. The right. statement, I am dead, is a false statement because uh, it, I am not dead. Right. Simple enough. Yep. Uh, so, the question is, this statement is false. Is this a true statement? A false statement? It seems like it is both because, like, you can't, like, that's the point of like have, of being a paradox, right? Like, in case it's not clear, let me uh, work through the logic real quick. So, say this statement is false. So let's say, let's imagine we're gonna assume the statement is true, right? Okay. So it is true. The statement oh. is false. Oh, whoops. Sorry. I, uh, maybe you have to cook it with other food. Yeah, I think I need to put it with like a meat or something. Maybe. Okay. So let's say the state uh this statement is true so let's say okay it is a true statement that means it is true that this statement is false but hold on that means the statement is false which right. can't be right so let's assume the statement is false well if it's false then it is false that it is false which if you work backward means oh no. okay well, i only got a few more peppers left <laughs> if it, it is false it is false meaning it's true but if it's true it must be false if it's false and you, so on and so forth and exactly. your brain brain explodes isn't this like in Maybe you have to do like two. Maybe try just cooking the pepper by itself. I wonder if that'll do anything. It's been a while since I've tried cooking things in this game. So yes. So no matter how you look at it, it looks like the statement is like is both false and not false, and yeah. it makes no sense. And in philosophy, we don't like when things don't do that. So like going back to like what logic is to get us started, like you can put anything into a if then statement everything okay. can be it's called they're called conditionals and so anything that's it, any conditional you have gives you uh, like if a then b like if a happens then b will happen by nessa like this necessarily all right so right. to give an example of this in the real world uh if link walks into the iceland without a heat without the pepper item he will become cold and lose hp yes it's a bit of a complicated one but you get the idea yes i and think so, you want the magnet yeah, yeah okay uh, is it B? It, well, it's one of the buttons, I forget which. There we go. Okay. Alright, yeah. right, so, yes, yeah, so it, like, that is, that is an example, right, of, of the statement, or uh, of using conditions. So now, the thing is, if you put it into, if this statement is true, then it is false, but those two things can't, necessarily can't be together, right? Like, if right. it's false, then it's false. But it seems like we, like with this statement in particular, can I move the fold? Uh, you are right on the edge of the cliff, so if you... That might work. Yeah, 
Yeah, it seems, seems secure enough. <laughs> you made it across. Better, better, th better than some of the bridges in China that we crossed. Just... Hmm. Uh, so, yes, if if the statement's true, then it's false, and you have a contradiction. And the thing is, contradictions can't exist. They can't. They cannot. It, uh, it's called the law of non-contradiction. Right. And it, it, it I, if it's false, then nothing matters all like there's no there's yeah. no way of knowing anything the law of non-contradiction i i from what i have studied as well the law of non-contradiction basically the most important most fundamental law of uh logic and it's so basic we don't even think about it it's this the law of non-contradiction uh to put it formally it's a cannot be non-a in the same time in the same conditions right right so a potato cannot be not a potato right. link cannot be not, not link. link exactly a statement a, a true statement cannot be not a true statement right so, so. whatever whatever it is whatever something is it it, it is yeah <laughs> but and it, it's a bit fun to think to try to prove that because i don't think you i think we have to take that as an axiom right it, you, there it's you it's very difficult to prove because all our language is based on the assumption all our reasoning is based on that assumption so you know can't use it to prove you can't use an you shouldn't use an assumption to prove itself right but there is a way to like prove there's like a logical proof for it um i personally don't remember it i'm gonna i'm gonna fall and i don't you can just see it now yeah oh your cold resistance in three yeah. two one and you're starting to freeze to death okay. it's okay go, i think those goblins up yeah. there have some fire you can go Ooh, big sword nice so oh, no. <laughs> whoa okay i'm i'm gonna i got this Yes. So, yes, the law of non-contradiction, there is a proof for it. I don't remember it all the way, uh, but it's, if you remember from like, two weeks ago where we talked about uh, the meditations from Descartes, Yes. he brings up a way of proving that like he, he knows the law of non-contradiction is true. Um, so somehow he, he, he finds a way to prove it. Um, if I sit here, will I still lose health? Uh, I think if you're standing next to the fire, you're fine, but okay. if you try to go out somewhere else it'll right. be a problem okay i mean you so, can just theoretically heal yourself up until the mountain but yeah, yeah. so that's insane so but yes so he yes he, he, he proved that we do know the law of non-contradiction somehow or i mean if you believe what it, there is a proof in there yeah it's just not very uh and do ah freezing water seems like a bad idea Oh. I, I legit thought that was a lake, like a frozen lake. Mm -hmm. How is it, it not it was frozen? A lake. How is it not frozen? It's this it's not, cold. It's not that cold, I guess. I don't know. Okay, okay, cold enough to kill me in two minutes, though. Um, so yeah, so lo logical contradictions can't exist because of the, like the law of non-contradictions. So anytime, oh cool, I saved right there. So all of these uh, laws. Or all, all these statements have to be either true or false, and so statements like that one just can't exist, um, and they don't have a logical like resolution. Right. But we want there to be one. So another example is. In... Oh wait, let's look. Let's oh, right there, there it is. Okay. Just... Okay. Hmm. So the, like so. These these also come up a lot in paradoxes. Yes. We, like so when something appears to be false, and that's actually an important distinction for paradoxes. Is that it, they always they always appear to be false because we never say that they are or that they they can't exist because right we know that there is an answer we just can't find it and so it seems like there's a paradox like uh, a, a famous logical paradox is Zeno's paradox right right where it's impossible to move any amount of distance yeah uh, do you want to explain Zeno's actually no, I can explain Zeno's yeah, paradox I, I'm the math ear I wouldn't call myself the math guy but I'm the math yeah. ear of the two of us yes, yes so the Zeno's paradox it's it's more of a numbers paradox. Uh, Achilles and the tortoise. So the tortoise, Achilles is the fastest runner in all of ancient Greece. All these paradoxes and situations we usually talk about either ancient Greece or modern day. But can we have a can we have a philosophical situation that takes place in high medieval or something? Europe? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Achilles is the fastest runner in all of ancient Greece. I go over to the left. That one, yeah. And no, the, the that thing, yeah. Yeah. Download. Uh, and he is racing a tortoise. Now, to make it fair, the tortoise gets a 10 meter head start. I, I don't know if it's meters or whatever distance, but we'll say meters. Okay. It's a 10 meter head start. So, let's say, I don't remember the exact numbers. I think it's not this fast, but Achilles runs at 10 meters per hour. Right. Or uh, 10 meters per uh, 
second minute. I, I don't know. The, the, I'm, like I said, I'm not that mathy. But Achilles can run uh, the, the distance. Okay, Achilles can run the 10 meters in... Yeah, Achilles can run the 10 meters in a certain amount of time. And in that same amount of time, the tortoise can go one meter. Okay. okay? So that per first period of time, let's call it a, a, a minute, whatever, a second, 30 seconds. That mi first minute goes by. Uh, Achilles covers that 10... Achilles covers that 10 meters, but the tortoise is already covered one meter. So Achilles hasn't caught the tortoise yet. Right. So now, of course, Achilles has to pass the tortoise. Achilles has to reach it. Uh, Achilles has to... Yes, if you notice, you can only have three at a time. Oh, I can climb them. Okay. Yeah, these are cool. I, I, this is probably my favorite run. Okay, I, I did not know that I could climb them. I was like, how am I going to... Yeah, Achilles. Uh, so to pass the tortoise, right. Achilles has to now cover the intervening distance between himself and the new tortoise. But then again, in that time to cover that intervening distance, the tortoise will have moved a little bit farther. Now to cover that distance, Achilles has to move, go that far in that small period of time. But during that period of time, the tortoise has moved just a little bit farther. And if you keep extending it out smaller and smaller increments, you realize Achilles will never catch the tortoise. Right. Which, which... makes no sense because Achilles moves faster than tortoise. Right. Now this is interesting. Actually, there's a reason this doesn't work. That's not just a paradox. It's, uh, I believe, a calculus issue. Okay. But All right. We're, we're changing gears a little bit. People... Cha we're changing gears, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that, that was a rather long indirect. It has to do with, I believe, limits, where when a limit approaches a number. Right. It's, it's been a while since I was in calculus class, but... Uh... Something about parabolas. Yeah. So suffice it to say, that actually isn't a paradox. It's more of just a sounds like a paradox if you will because well, it, well, remember a paradox the whole idea is that there is an answer so uh, they like they, they always just appear to be false okay so, right. so I, feel like I, I feel like that wall has something to do with this but mm -hmm. Ooh, what if you try get a little closer maybe right up there you go you are so cool okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep this, going this game is great right can i just we, we talk about yes. philosophy a lot but can i take a minute to talk about gaming this, this game is amazing uh yes it is I think I have to play this. So, oh, I'm I'm dying. Smart. Okay. Not smart enough. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. So uh, back to Achilles yes. and the tortoise. Yes. So and Achilles Zena. and the tortoise. This is Zeno's paradox. Yes. All right. And so the idea that, like, I always hear it that way, but you were explaining how it's a calculus problem and that, that it's not actually a paradox because because of... uh, mathematically you can show that yes, you will reach the paradox. You you can't keep dividing up smaller and smaller increments like that. That's not how math actually works. But regardless, we'll call it a paradox. So the okay. the paradox is well, if you follow this logic to its conclusion, you come to the conclusion Achilles can never catch the tortoise. But they extend that out. Well, then you can never cover any amount of distance ever because to go a mile, you have to first have to go half a mile. To right. Half a mile, you have to go a quarter mile, and so on and so on. Right. Which I mean, it is true. You do have to do that. Right. But, but somehow, which means that you can't move. <laughs> <laughs> but we can move. I, I believe when Zeno made this paradox, if I remember correctly, um, he was telling it to Socrates or Plato, one of the two. Um, yes. And he was like, you can't move any amount of distance. And then to prove him wrong, like, Socrates walked out of the lecture hall. Yeah, like, I, I remember it, that story. He just walked out. He was like, okay, I'm, I'm over this. Like, the ancient well, Greek philosophers were pretty cool. They were. Um, my favorite uh, uh, inventory is full. No. So I have to empty something to yeah. in order to carry it? Okay. So. I think it's your weapons inventory. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. No, no, not those. Uh, go right one more. Your melee weapons oh, and range weapons. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you got all these, all these clubs. Yeah, let's drop some clubs. So, yes. So they were my favorite is Diogenes, or uh, yeah, yeah, Diogenes. Favorite, favorite, favorite ancient philosopher. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, but yeah. So, the idea is that it seems like it's both true that yeah, you do have to cross that infinite amount of distance, but yet I know also for a fact that I can move right and so the question is how can i move like how is that possible it shouldn't be it yeah. should be impossible it should be and yet that so there we go that's a paradox a thing seems a certain way and yet it can't be that way right right so if you put this into uh what's called logic so it's an actual uh it's like a whole other language of, of way of philosophers writing statements out like 
this statement is false or if um, you don't drink water, then you will die. Like, you write that out into like symbols and using short letters. Can I go pray now? Uh, Does that do I have maybe. enough? Do you, how many do you have? Three or four? Four. Oh, here you go. All right. So, the more, uh, so when you put paradoxes into these statements, you end up with, uh, basically you get, like you were saying earlier, where you get A is not A. Right. So you, you would draw out an A with an, like, a, uh, it looks like a little half, it looks like a, a minus sign with a little leg on it. Uh, oh. and it, it means it negates it. So it, you would say A is not A, but that makes no sense because just by saying A is A, you're discrediting the other part, which is that it's not. Uh, so Xenos is one of my one of the uh -huh. ones that I like to think of the most because mm -hmm. anytime I move, like I'm moving my arm right now, I know somehow I'm crossing an infinite amount of distance, and that to me is just really cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and for what it's worth, good viewers, we'll leave a, like a quick description mm -hmm. of what all the different symbols and symbolic logic looks in the uh in the description because it is a bit hard to visualize with just us talking about it yeah there there are lots of symbols and then yeah. and then there's a point where you throw, start using diamonds and uh yeah things. yeah it's it, it's <laughs> long and complicated we're not going to get into all the weeds right now yeah there i will okay Ooh, look at mysterious old man turning into yeah what is this guy all right so i think i missed how exactly i used the hint. uh i think he wants you to open up your map and look where like if the shrines were in an x where the x would cross so like i see okay like the four shrines you got not counting the um so wait, that's like this one right not i don't think counting that one because uh, that was the freebie where you woke up oh i see okay so then so the, yeah that one and then this one then, oh, that's no. the tower and then yeah, yeah. So okay, there... uh, where were we? Zeno. Uh, Zeno and Symbolic Logic. Right. So I feel like it's like here. Right? Yeah, right around there. Seems right. Alright, so now what? How do I... So in your little mini-map on the counter, in the bottom right corner, the little purple... Right. So now, I mean, how do I fly? Can oh. I use the... Oh, he didn't give it to you. Oh, okay. I thought he gave it to me. Okay. Anyway, so Xenos Paradox. No. What are we talking about? We were talking about symbolic, symbolic logic. logic, right? Yes. So there's, there's all kinds of different symbols you use for logic to break the break things down into really simple statements. Um, that way, when you are looking at something for like logically to see if it works, you don't have to read a ton of things. You can just look at your symbols that like break it down super easy. Um, that's another fun paradox, Noah, that you know of. Hmm. Let's see. Here's the thing. A lot of these paradoxes include what I like to call self-referential statements. So this statement is false. It is, it's a statement that refers to itself. Uh, if you ever see a slightly more advanced version of one, think of a page of a book. On pa on one side of the page, it says statement on the other side is true. And the other side says statement on the other side is false. Right. So you flip. You start on page one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see that? That was that, impressive. That, that skill. You start on page one, and it says the statement on the other side is true. Oh, so it must be true that on page two, st which page two says page one is false, but you can go back and forth. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What is, what's another uh, here's fun, a, fun one that I've thought of that's a little more, like, concrete? Mm. Mm. Oh, here we go. Uh, a... Let me see if I can remember how this goes. A logician walks into a town with... Uh, only two bar or a logician walks into a town and there's only one barber in the town. Uh, okay. He needs or she needs a haircut, so she goes to the barber and the barber has a sign on the door that says, "This barber cuts or cuts the hair of everyone in town who does not cut their own hair." So the barber, the logician thinks about it and says, "So does the barber cut their own hair?" We'll we'll, we'll call the barber uh, she as well. Okay. Does the barber cut her own hair? Does the barber cut her own hair? Because the barber cuts everyone's hair. Cuts the hair of everyone who does the, not cut their own hair. So, <laughs> so, yeah. So, oh, dang it, I missed it. I, I was looking for that lake thing that I... Oh, I know where it was. Okay. I might run out of food. Keep going. Yeah. So, so the uh, you see... Okay, the, well, you have to ask, does the barber cut her own hair? If the answer is yes, then then, uh, the, then she should not be cutting that her own hair because she cuts the hair of everyone except for those who cut their own hair. But then if she does, if that means she doesn't cut her own hair, then she does cut her own hair and, you know, back and forth. It, it, we, we come up to the same sort of thing. Uh, so again, this is what I, um, I don't know if there's a, 
formal philosophical term for it. You you've had more formal training than I have, but I, I always think of them as self or self referential statements where it's that that's where these paradoxes usually show up. It's a statement that talks about itself or talks about the talker in a certain right. way when normally you would talk about something outside it. Yeah, I think I this m might be a bit more than this might be stretching this definition or this term a little bit. Yeah, um, I agree. But the idea would be it's kind of like it, they're self-defeating statements. Yeah, self-defeating. Yeah. So by saying it, you are negating what you're doing. And I, uh, a lot of arguments and like uh, politics usually end up coming up here where you're your argument is self-defeating because you want two things that you want two separate things that you can't have. Ooh, yeah. Th th this is a uh, this is the spicy part. So, uh, oh, I wish I could. If, if you stuff. just want to <laughs> eat something that's not gonna have, you can just eat like a mushroom, or if you go over, yeah, let's see what that. Uh, here, uh, eat, eat one of the dubious foods. I, I always love a uh, link. Well, just watch Link's little animation. That's uh, that's pretty see. cute. <sighs> he can eat it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it it, 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 it's giving me yeah. health, so. Ah, uh, yeah. So, All right. uh, not to get too political, but can you get very political? And... <laughs> uh, all right, I'm trying to think, because, like, there are several of these that I know of. Um, and so, let's see. All right, I can do this. So, oh, nope. Uh, I think you have to yeah, just hold on to it and okay. press B or X. Okay. Um, so let's see, it's, uh, think of a self-defeating argument. An argument would, a self-defeating argument would be something like, um, I want to increase safety, um, like national security, but I want to defund the military. Hmm, okay. Like, you're arguing for two things, and by doing the one thing, you you're, defeat the you're, other. you're gonna defeat the other, so you have to, like, be consistent. Um, and I feel like people a lot of times... Uh, forget this. I really hope this is worth it. Inside, one mushroom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nope, nope. Okay, nope. I died. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't working. Maybe, can I jump across? If I build one, can I yeah, jump? Yeah, I think if you build one and build it close enough, you can just jump across. Okay, maybe. so we'll, we'll try that next. Um, so things like that are self-defeating. And there, it's been a while since I've actually seen one, like, um, in the wild, like, or while I've been, um, reading, because mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I took logic about two years ago, so it, it's been a hot minute since I've been thinking about it, um, like this, but you can usually imagine, like, uh, like I said, they, usually these come up in political cartoons where there'll be, like, some people standing on a, uh, or sitting on a tree, and then one person's off on the side sawing the branch. Saw, sawing the tree they the, the branch that they're the sitting branch on. They, okay. Up. Okay, you saw maybe, you maybe you put it a little closer to the storm I, so you don't have to sleep or swim in the water. Sleep in the water. Don't sleep in the water, kids. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, if you learn one thing by watching amateur philosophers play games, you learn don't sleep in freezing water. Yeah, no, don't yeah. don't do that. Don't don't do that. <laughs> uh so uh, what's another paradox that you know of? Uh, let me look up uh, some good ones. I think we referenced one earlier, uh, the, the paradox of like where you put on, you know, you have hands. That one is also considered a paradox. Um, because you think you know about the world around you, but you don't because everything that you would use to know about the world around you is faulty. So. Oh, here we go. This is a fun little one I just saw on uh, the, the the teacher's bane, Wikipedia. Uh, okay. Impossible is not in my vocabulary. Impossible is not in my vocabulary. So that means that... Uh, that's a self-defeating statement because it is in your vocabulary because... You're using it. You're using it, yeah. So yeah, it's... Oh, uh, ooh, this is a fun one. Thought uh, A thought experiment. Uh, everyone's favorite time travel... Oh, the oh, grandfather paradox. The grandfather paradox. So this, uh, th this is a really fun one. Now this is a tr bit trickier to define because we can't actually test it at right. all. Right. But the Not grandfather yet, paradox, depending on depending on how you view time travel, depending on how, <laughs> and it really depends on how you view time travel. The grandfather paradox goes like this. Let's say you go back in time and meet your grandfather before he met your grandmother, and you kill him. I, I don't know why you did, but 
Yeah. You, he, he, you're, I, back then, I guess your grandfather wasn't a, was not a cool dude. But you go back in time and kill your grandfather. <laughs> Self, <laughs> Self-defeating argument. Right there. The, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you go back in time and you kill your grandfather before he met your grandmother. So... He never got a chance to have your parent, so therefore you were never born. So if you, but if you were never born, you couldn't have gone back to kill your grandfather. But if you never killed your grandfather, he's still alive, so you were given, so you were born, and so on. Right, and yeah. uh, this is why this is uh, why most people think that time travel is impossible because yes. that possibility would exist. Yes, but uh, as or you... also either that or time travel would, if it's not impossible, it would imply like total determinism. Like you can't kill your grandfather because your grandfather survived. So no right. matter, even if you try. Uh, if you if you shoot try to shoot your grandfather, the gun will be jammed. Or if you right. try to stab him, uh, you'll miss. It's something like that, where the universe in some way will make it impossible uh, right. for your, the contradiction to happen. Which uh, actually, uh, while we're on the subject of time travel, which is one of my both as a avid sci-fi fan, time travel is both one of my favorites and my least favorite things in science fiction. No, no, don't do that. Uh, oh, so close. Okay, can I make it? Yes, yes, I can! Very nice. Okay. We got it. Time travel is both one of my favorite and least favorite things in science fiction because... Don't do not do that. I just maybe jump across. Can I... Do you think I can do I, it? I think, yeah, yeah, if you jump. How do I jump? Give yourself a little running start. How do, how do I jump? X, I think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Very close. Um, but yes, so time travel is both... Is very fun and also very. But also, uh, yeah, gives fiction you writers tend to not know how to handle it. Uh, uh, like and, Terminator. And, that mm. is a good example of yeah. how time travel can be is usually depicted in movies, and I think it's one like it, it is very much like the definition of the grandfather paradox because Skynet's sending robots back to kill James Connor, but if they kill him, then there will be no one to stop them, so they wouldn't need to send anyone back yeah, to kill exactly. him. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, this gets into the whole uh, one explanation I've heard that isn't total determinism is, oh, whenever you go back in time, you don't actually go back in time. You just create a different universe. So in one so, universe, so back J to the James Conner is dead. Yeah. <laughs> but that then you that gets into messy questions of, okay, well, uh, where are you creating all this matter from? All this matter and energy. That that defies oh. laws. Yeah, so, like, I, I've never thought of it that way, but I yeah. guess it's true. Yeah. Well, I guess you... Mm, I guess it would be uh, that would be the case if you were making a new universe but um, what if it's you're just traveling between the universes traveling between universes so that already exist mm. but then yeah so then your time travel didn't actually cause the universe it's just you're jumping exactly universes uh, yeah so speaking yeah the, the, it all really depends on your own your fictional form of time travel with every fictional in quotes uh, fictional. For, the, for the believers out there yeah you know the only time it's interesting because we talk about time travel as paradox. Usually traveling to the future doesn't cause any paradoxes, or not many. Yeah, or they're not as apparent. Usually we're more, okay, yeah. don't you fall. All right, I did what, it! What was it all For the one mushroom. Opal. Opal. Cool. I think it's worth money, maybe? Okay, uh, real I mean, quick. Uh, Heal before you die. Yeah, yeah. I don't, don't make me do all this all over again. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually... Now, I was saying time travel, we don't really have a way to test it, but actually, we kind of do. Uh, if you know, in many, in fact, I'd say many or most religions involve some form of prophecy. Right. Which is uh, talking about the future. And if you think about it a certain way, prophecy is information time travel. Information is traveling from the future to the past or right. to our present. So, the, I get this can reach into the uh, many of, I, I believe, Oedipus? Oedipus Rex is a... Okay, it's, actually, it's, I don't. I never. I never read the play of it. I, I believe I, that's yeah. the one where um, the Oedipus is given a prophecy. Oh wait, I do. Where? This. Oh no. Uh, quick, heal, heal, heal. Oh, I can oh. heal in the water. I can heal in the water, can't I? I don't. Yeah. I can eat. Oh. So I kept thinking if I was in the water, I couldn't eat to save myself. Okay. okay. But you know what? I better have that opal when I when I get out of this. <laughs> So um, the Oedipus is, when he's very young, he's given a prophecy. Oh no, his parents are given a prophecy that um, the young Oedipus will eventually kill his father and sleep with his mother. Right. Which uh, So his parents are like, oh, well, let's, to stop that, we're going to send him up for adoption so he never sees us. And okay. then the young Oedipus never knows his uh, true parents. In fact, he doesn't even know he's adopted. Uh, yeah, he doesn't even know he's adopted. 
So he goes into... One day he meets... He's traveling along the road and he meets his birth father and uh, gets into a quarrel with him and kills him and then travels a little farther and meets his birth mother and seeks her and uh, then when he finds out what happened, he puts out his eyes. I mean, understandable. Understandably, <laughs> yeah. It's not a very... It's not a pleasant play. Uh, yes. Check. I don't actually think you have the opal. Check your inventory. No, it's there. And there was no, and there was no box in the in the lake. Oh, great. Okay. Oh wait, and I can just warp travel out of here, can't I? Yeah. How do I get, get me out of here? Uh, so you're trying to go to probably yeah, it's probably the quickest way. Uh, yeah. So at, um, so this is kind of a if you think if you squint at it, this is a time travel paradox because the question is, okay, well the information came from the future. Is it would it be possible for Oedipus to avoid his prophecy? Because by trying to avoid it. He fulfilled right. it. So right. if he had not tried to avoid it, would it have been fulfilled? It's yeah. And so this is this is we're branching off a little bit. We're going yeah. in more into determinism versus free will and all of that. Oh, which, always, always a fun topic. Yes. Um. And I think like th there's obviously the Oedipus example. There's also the oh, I can freeze this now. I wonder if it does anything. I'll freeze it. I don't know why. Why not? Really weird. Nope. Hot. Well, there's some really cool chair. There's not, but like. Imagine if there was, though. Imagine if there was. Um, so this gets into, like, determinism, because you're right. By tr attempting to avoid the future, Oedipus and his parents caused the event that they were trying to avoid. And so the question is, can we avoid things that happen in the future? Or are they set in stone? Yeah. Like, can if, pro if, is prophecy possible, really? Yeah, is prophecy possible? And uh, if so, does it imply determinism? Right. Yeah. And Which... Uh, uh, I, again, determinism versus free will. Va fascinating topic. I, I don't... What, we're, I, we have to get to it one of these days. Yes, we but, will. Yes. You know what? I, can I say, let's hold off on this topic until we have a slightly bigger audience than just my alternate account. Okay. It's, okay, fair enough. <laughs> because so. I think this is worthwhile talking about, but I want to leave it until we have people to listen. I don't know. Is that prideful? No. Uh, it sounds a little... No. no, no, not at all. Uh, yeah. But, um, paradoxes. Yeah, time. We've gone through time travel. We've gone through paradoxes. What are some other non-time travel paradoxes? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, there is a yeah. famous example in, uh, well, I don't think it's famous, but there is an example in the Bible of a, uh, of Paul committing a, uh, paradox. Ooh, yeah. On, uh, on accident. One? I don't think, I don't think if he, he meant it to be like this, but... If you read a lot of the Bible and you translate it to, like literally into logic, so like just the word, you don't take any of the like meaning, like the hit like hidden meaning behind it, like uh, all the information that we have about it, um, and you translate it into like modal logic, you get a lot of like contradictions. Mm -hmm. um, so they're logical contradictions. Once again, this is if you do it without taking the meaning into consideration. Yeah. Can I do it underneath myself? Uh, I don't think you can. Uh, maybe you can do that. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, it's not. Yeah, I don't think you can pull up... Ha-ha! Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can pull up the rune interface while you're swimming, but... Okay. Um, um so what what it is, is he's referring to this uh, nation. Uh, I think it's Crete. In the island of Crete. And he says, they're all terrible people, like they all are liars and cheaters. Even one of their own says, we are all liars. And so if they're all liar, uh, they're they're all always lying. And so if he's saying we all we always lie, like about us, like yeah. uh, like if our people always lie, then he is one of the people. So therefore, that statement he's saying is a lie. Right. But and if, then we get back into the old this statement is false. Exactly. So very like a very very famous thing about Paul Paul commits a, uh, and and like the thing is like he didn't have to like there's nothing in like necessarily like that made oh, him. Oh look, is that Excalibur up there? That's what I'm going for. I'm hoping. Um, so he, there wasn't a need to, because all he could have said is, like, he could have changed the statement slightly, and it would have worked and, like, had the same meaning, like, but no, instead he used, like, the the exact statement said, this is a true statement. So he said, like, this false statement is a true, uh, no, it is not Excalibur, it's a rusty, rusty sword. Yeah, although actually, I believe the sword in the stone was Calibur, not uh, Excalibur, but, okay. hey, anyway. Mr. Hey, Mr. Hey, yeah. Mr. Bookworm over here. Yeah, and then... Later on, King Arthur loses it. I forget how, and then the Lady in the Lake gives him Excalibur. There's a Lady in the Lake. Well, not like this Lake. Like like uh, like Avatar: Last Airbender. That's probably where Avatar got it from. Okay, makes sense. Fair enough. Uh, where are we? Oh yeah. So I'm uh, looking up, do, doing my uh, 
incredibly professional research of pulling up Wikipedia on oh, yeah. the other monitor while we're recording. So there's, yeah, uh, a fault. There's a couple of kind of paradoxes. A very, very fickle paradox produces a result that appears absurd but is demonstrated to be true. Uh, so, for example, the surprising fact that a 21-year-old could have only five birthdays if you were born on a leap day on February 29th. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's a paradox, but it's like, oh, okay, no, that's actually true. And then the false false paradox is uh, only appears false, but actually is false due to fallacy. Uh, that would be uh, Zeno's paradox is an example of that. Okay. Another one, ask your ask your math 12-year-olds, uh, ask your math teacher to uh, use the quadrat, not the... Um, the quadratic part. The law of uh, oh shoot, what is it? The difference of two squares property to prove that one equals zero. But you can do uh, some fancy sleight of hand. Some fancy mathematical sleight of hand to prove that n number equals zero by secretly dividing by zero, which you know you're not allowed to do. But why? I don't know. But you're because not it to causes a. Uh, oh. right, here. That, tell, tell, me, <laughs> tell me this. Uh, what? You know how dividing works, right? So you have uh, link has five. Or Link has six arrows. Divide them into two piles. Right. Okay? There's three in each pile. Divide them into one pile. There's six in each pile. It's a bit weird, but if you divide it into half a pile, okay, well, there's, you know, yeah. 12 in a pile. Divide them into zero piles. Yeah, can. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yes, there's, uh, there's using some fancy mathematical sleight of hand, there's ways to prove that uh, any number equal one equals zero, which obviously isn't true, but it, it's not actually a paradox. You're just doing... Like a bit of, uh, ooh, you want more health or want more stamina? Hmm, that's a good question. Which, um, you know, I I feel like I'm gonna die. I die a lot, so I'm gonna go for. <laughs> I want more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is a very interesting religion where you just you go around, you kill things, collect like big <laughs> temples, and then you go pray and exchange the, like the yeah. stuff you get, and and you live a longer life. Yeah. 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 So uh, another another thing that this makes me think of is like with one number equaling a number. You and I have had this conversation in the past. How is it that one point one point nine 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 repeating is mm -hmm. two? Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's easy. <laughs> uh, the easiest way to prove it. Well, I'll just do point oh. nine 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 repeating equals. Uh, oh, is this a cutscene or is it? I I it is a cutscene. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, okay. Because he told me to meet him at the X, and it was the Temple of Time. That's yeah, why. That's okay. very smart. Very smart. Right, how am I going to climb up there? I think you can probably climb the walls, right? I don't know what the rules are here. Yeah, well, we'll find out. What's the worst that can happen is you'll fall and die. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, there's a, oh, there's there's a ladder. They put a ladder off. <laughs> so, why did the cathedral builders install a ladder on the side of the temple? I, I guess so the hero can always climb up to meet his destiny. Because plot. Because plot. <laughs> Very nice of it. It was very nice of them, I suppose. Yes. Uh, where were so, we? So, uh, 999 repeating. Oh, right. Uh, equals 1. Yeah, the easiest way to prove it is think about it. Okay. Uh, what's 1 divided by... Or what's 1 divided by 3? Or, no, uh, what's 1 third? In, what's 1 third in a fraction? 1 over 3, right? Right. What's uh, 1 third as a decimal? Point three 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 repeating. Right. So, easiest way to prove <laughs> well it. Okay. Done there, young one. In... Uh, in mathematics, well, you're allowed to do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it to the, both sides of the equation. Have. So, 1 over 3 I equals 0. 0.3333. Mm. Multiply both sides by 3. 3 over 3 equals 0. 0.999999. Right. Around repeating. But 3 over 3 is just 1. So, 1 equals 0. 0.999 repeating. Right. But, see, to me, that seems like a like a, like a paradox. Because, yeah. like, although it is true, I'll, I'll, I'll grant that it's true. I don't know how it's true, but it is. Ooh, King of Rohan? King of Rohan. Ooh. Mm. Turns out the mysterious old the man great was calamity the dead was king. Merciless. Well, okay, that's it. Devastated this everything in its path. This is this no, is plot. <laughs> a um, so yeah, like, I I I think it's a great idea, uh, example of a uh, paradox because and it seems time, like you're saying that one is not one because one is one, did not think it but you're also saying one is yeah, point nine repeating, memory, which is not one, <laughs> but it is. So rather than and that, so it's. I, thought I don't know. Best I've, I've never, I've never liked that you could do that. I've always said that I want my kids anytime Forgive they like when they're like really basic like in grade school you are now to ready. put that as an answer like whenever they, whatever they get just put it as the number below with nine repeating years and then yeah. watch their math teachers try and tell them that it's wrong. Be like no, it, it's not wrong. It's just it's new inconvenient. <laughs> A lot of things we do it's in math are actually because of convenience. 
That makes sense. The demon yeah. Was born into this kingdom, so yeah, uh, logical paradoxes. The uh, we we, we, we kind of meandered a bit this uh, this episode, but I think the thing is, logical paradoxes isn't exactly a field of logic or a field right. of philosophy. It's more interesting things that pop up. Yeah, and we'll leave a link in the description about all the uh, the different. Symbols and logic. Because a lot of them are logic. arrows, arrows back and forth. That, those so ones make sense. Um, there's a uh, weird like triangle dot. It looks like a. Uh, what's the symbol in here? Oh, the uh, the triforce. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's always what makes me think of. It's like three dots around each other, three circles, and it means like therefore. Yeah, it's therefore. Yeah, if, if, you, if you if you want to see more logic, just look up a modal logic. Yeah. And then look up some modal logic problems. They, 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 can you look it up real quick. I want to. I want to. These record, relics, yeah. um, the divine beasts, we try to explain an example. Machines piloted by warriors. We uh, also found logic. the guardian. An army of mechanical soldiers who fought pretty good. This coincided with ancient legends, oft repeated. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. It's been a while since I've seen this. Let's see. Yeah, so we've got some boxes, right? Boxes mean like boxes, arrows. I forgot. Diamonds. It was Oh, upside down A's. That's the other one that's really common. And upside down means um. Does that mean one hundred years ago? No, and is a is a to inherit just a, power, and a skilled knight uh, upside down B, is a, is and. It was clear. Um, or you can use an ampersand. Uh, this means always. Of uh, the upside down, it means always. So we always X always has from across the quality and A, and um, X always has the quality B. Right. And vice versa. So, so with you, the X, so, uh, we dubbed these pilots. To put a uh, simple a name explanation on it. Their um, the princess. A video game always runs on electricity on the brink and away always needs a console, but be it a PC, a console. Yes. Uh, okay. So that that, yeah, that that would be. And so what you would do is the X would be whatever thing you're talking about. Yes. So in, the, in this case, X would be video game. And you, usually you have a key somewhere. Bottom yeah, the bottom of here. It explains what each symbol is, or what for you for your using what each variable is, and so you would have x x equals uh, video games, and so then and then you would say a is electricity, b is console, and so when you read this, I would read it as video games always have the quality of needing electricity and always have the quality of needing the champions lost uh, console. Oh, this, is, this, this looks very bad. This does look very bad. I feel like I'm like this is really epic. This is real this is really epic. If only we were a gaming channel and not a philosophy channel. Yes. And thus the kingdom of Hyrule. But yeah, so each symbol has a different meaning and uh, it's really it's really convenient sometimes because when you write things down like that, like as long as you know the key you can write down a lot of information in very, very Face few Ganon alone. Uh, sentences. Yeah. Link. So we've talked a lot about logical paradoxes and uh, a bit about symbolic Face logic. Anything the our viewers should know about logic that isn't a paradox or involved in symbols? Like, it, I, I know you when you start breaking things down into logical symbols and symbolic logic, that you you see people make a lot of contradictions dear, in their normal speech right a lot and M so, much more than you would expect night. and so the one thing i would say right about logic that's not about paradoxes so much as uh that night was like i've been saying with like conditionalism or everything that you say and everything you that you do you can break down into logic when you're and when you do that especially when you're listening to other people talk like you're saying with like contradictions and stuff you are taken to the you realize that there's a here a more effective, like a efficient way of talking. Right. The, the way later. the way you should be saying things. Like a lot of times, I'm, I know in our friend group, I like to say or a lot, and then I'll add that it, it that it's inclusive. Now, or someone will say, "Well, yeah, which do you mean?" And I'm like, "Yes, it's like or is inclusive." And so what that means is that like it's like imagine when you're however trying to log in uh, to an account you have, exhausted. and you get your username What's or your password wrong. It says, oh, username or password Ganon is wrong. Yeah. Like, you know, okay, either my username is wrong or my password, or it could be both. Right. There's there's nothing that stops it from being cool. So or is an inclusive statement. Yes. And so a lot of times when people say, so I like, when people say, and or, makes no sense. See, I... You just need or. Uh, yeah, you know, obviously, uh, a amateur writer along with an amateur philosopher, I gotta disagree. In Eng daughter. English language, maybe in some, maybe in logic, or is exclusive. In the English language, or is usually exclusive. And if you want to be sure to include 
So, or is a bit ambiguous, but it's typically exclusive. I think if you want to be certain, as well as you those guardians say and or. If you want to make sure it's castle. the exclusive or, you say either or. I believe it which is always exclusive. For you to head you right. can have to the either the fish point. or the steak. Right, and steak is the right answer. Just, just so everyone knows, <laughs> steak is the right. But um, gotta build that brain but, power. So if, if you don't put accept, right, or what, what, what were you saying? Either. Um, either. either. If you don't say either, so if you say you can have the steak or the fish, the I still like she will tell you more because I didn't say ahead. either. In and your head, you're thinking like I could get both. State. There's no reason yeah. to stop. Yeah. It, it's your favorite yeah. color, red or blue. Make your way past the twin summits. So you see, I could, are, you, are you implying that I couldn't have two From favorites? There, follow the and so I only it, What is your number one? Is your number one favorite color red or blue? Okay, so what that is is by your statement of saying you're basically adding either, or you're just in a fancier way. Yeah. Exactly. So you're, by, you're so I, I, to I'm, meet I'm your clearing, conditions. I'm clearing to, the ambiguity. Yeah. To, yeah. So as oh, long. Oh. What's this? A paracle header. Now I, I okay. It. Here we go. Okay. Press X while you're in the air to use it. In the air. So I have to jump off a cliff. You have to jump off a cliff, yeah. Okay. Okay. And like, I, oh, sorry. Let me get straight. I have to jump off the cliff to start it, which means that if I mess up, I'm gonna just get die. Yeah, yeah. It seems like you'd want this to be like you know, you press X, uh, standing on an edge, and then you jump off into paragliding. Well, nope. This but, one. But if like you get knocked, you, you get shot into the air, and then you I wanna... mean, that's fine and all. I would also like the option of being able to not have to like virtually commit suicide. Well, uh, let's see what happens. Oh, main quest: destroy Ganon. That sounds easy. Uh, yeah, yeah, we only have one job to do, people. Two Save jobs. the world. We have two jobs: destroy Ganon and seek out Impa. Wonder which is easier. Soldier's bow. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, do uh, you want to end this episode by jumping out of the yeah. building and seeing if you die? All right. Goodbye, cruel world. Oh, also, uh, real quick, look on your mini map. See that little blinking light? Yes. That's your, uh, that's your next quest, if okay. you want to go for it. Or you can just walk off into Hyrule. It's a big, it's a big rock. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. How do Three. I run? I'm going uh, just... to run, and then I'm jump up and press X. We got this. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey I'm, I'm not dying. Forward. Yay, <laughs> you can fl Link can fly. Nothing's stopping me now. Mm, uh, except don't let your stamina wheel fall out because that would. Uh, oh, then, 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 then that will stop you going in. <laughs> you know. And then I think, like, if you're this close to the ground, you can press B, I think, to cancel it. Yeah, then you just fall. There we go. All right. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to end it. Yeah, we, I agree. We, our, our conversation was a bit more meandering than usual, but I, I think it was fun. I feel like this is. I feel like this is good episode. I feel like we did a bit of improv and. Yeah, bit of bit of improv. And, and like you, you said, save this, the game. Real yeah, quick? and let's not get attacked by people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. With that out of the way, uh, this has been Amateur Philosophers Play Games. Please, if you, uh, thank you for much, so much for watching. And if you enjoy, please do all the YouTuber things. Leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe, press that bell, donate to our non-existent Patreon. Yeah. Buy our merch. That our merch that doesn't exist. Our our merch is our merch is a paradox. It mm. uh, it you can buy the merch, but it doesn't exist. Okay. Yep. I guess. Yeah. It is. Yep, thank yep. you. And with that out of the way, this has been Amateur Philosophers Play Games. See ya. Bye.